This is the auto train at the station while we were waiting to board. It's double decker. There's sleeper cars and passenger cars and dining cars, observation and lounge cars. It's, um, it's really quite long, hard to capture here. The stairwells are kind of narrow um, and tall, so you have to be careful just how many bags you try to bring in and out when you board and deboard. This is the club car early in the trip. There's not a lot of people here yet. But it is nice to be able to get yourself a drink and not be having to drive and still be headed towards your destination. When you're walking down the halls, it is narrow and the train does rock side to side. I thought the dinner was great. It's nice to be moving towards your destination and have somebody serve a meal of any kind. It's really nice. Getting to the sleeper car is easy. It's adjacent to the dining car. Um, there is different dining cars if you're doing coach or if you're doing a sleeper car. They had these nice 24-hour self-service areas set up as well. So you could basically get tea, hot water, chocolate, hot chocolate, I mean, coffee, um, whatever you want, 24-7. Um, and it was in each car. It wasn't like you had to cross cars to get one. Each car had a coffee station like that. So this is the sleeper car, that's the sofa by day, bed by night. Not a ton of room to have kids or anything on the floor. The toilet's there on the left and the sink is external, so it's kind of nice. You can use it in the cabin while someone else is using the toilet. The toilet is a true water closet, you'll see in a second. It also doubles as, doubles as the shower, which is interesting. Uh, if you've ever been in an RV, it's very similar to those kinds of uh, setups. We had great control over the air for hot or cold and it was fresh from the outside. There is a little closet uh, to the side of the sofa bed. It's basically not very big, a couple thin coats maybe. The views were amazing. These aren't where roads go. The trains travel different routes and so you see a lot of parts of America I've, I've never seen before. Here's the sofa uh, after turndown service where it's folded into a bed. Our particular setup had the bunk beds. Made it a little bit narrow to get through. I did like the metal lock on the door. I felt very safe. Again, I mentioned this before, but the sink is kind of hard to get to with the beds down. It is nice that it's outside of the toilet though. And here from this perspective, I'm sitting in the chair try to give you an idea um, next to the toilet and you can see the beds. When you wake up there's a nice self-service breakfast set up. So in the morning you arrive at the destination and deboard and as you wait the train cars carrying the automobiles are separated from the train and two by two they come off the train. It's really cool to see. And back in the car you go. So I, I think the highlights really for me were you can get up and explore the train and see parts of the country that are only visible by rail. The only drawbacks really are there's a lot of noise and motion on the train so you don't, you don't get really deep sleep and um, that was probably the biggest one for me. But all in all it was a great trip and I highly recommend it. I can't wait to do it again. Uh, it was 904 miles that I didn't have to drive each way, and I really enjoyed the time with my family.